Hello everyone with a new video on deep learning series. So in previous video we looked at the gradient descent algorithm in lot of detail. In this video we'll be looking at the momentum optimizer Nestor accelerated gradient optimizer. So gradient descent is nothing else but a one kind of optimizer using which we do optimize the weights of neural network. In this video we'll be looking at two new optimizers. So let us first recap the batch gradient descent, how it is and then we will be able to understand how momentum optimizer is different than gradient descent optimizer. So in batch gradient descent optimizer, we do calculate the gradient at, e at each iterations and the estimation of gradient that we get from here. The gradients are very accurate and they do point very accurately in the direction of global minima. So this is a very great property of gradient descent. But later on, we saw the mini batch gradient descent, and we saw that with mini batch gradient descent, what we get is that gradients are much more noisy. They do not always point exactly in the direction of our global minima, but they are much more computationally efficient. That's why we do prefer to use mini batch gradient descent. Now, I'll be introducing a new idea over here. So, let's say we calculated the gradients in our mini batch gradient descent. So these are the gradients that you can see in the black arrows. What we can do is that we can take the sum of all of these gradients that we have calculated over here. And when we'll be taking the sum, the, the vertical components will cancel out over here and we'll be getting a net vector in the direction in the horizontal direction. So this net vector will be represented in the red color over here. You can see that this new vector, the net vector that we are obtaining over here, it is very accurately pointing in the direction of global optima. So this sum of previous gradients are very, very useful over here. And this idea will be used in the momentum optimizer. So let us start with the momentum optimizer. So in the first iteration of the momentum optimizer, as we were doing in the mini batch gradient descent, we'll be calculating the cost function, we'll be calculating, then we'll be calculating the gradient of our cost function and we'll be updating our weights accordingly. In the second iteration, we'll be taking the aggregate or the sum of current gradient and the gradient in the previous iteration. So this was the gradient in the previous iteration and this is the gradient in the current iteration and we'll be taking the sum of both this and we'll be updating our weights accordingly. In the ith iteration, we'll be taking the sum of all previous gradients. So del j1 will be the gradient in first iteration and del j i by del w is the gradient in the current iteration. So the sum of all iter sum of gradients of the all iterations that will be giving us the more accurate estimation of the direction of the gradient. So this is a very great property over here, right? So this is the ith iteration of our momentum optimizer and the sum of gradients that is this aggregated gradient that we are calculating over here we, this will be again a vector because gradient is a vector so this sum will also be a vector we call this a new vector called as the momentum vector the sum of gradient is called as a momentum vector so we can replace this sum with a new vector which is m so our weight updates will have will be happening in somewhat this way just one thing that I want you to remember over here is that these are not the exact formulas. I'm just trying to give you the intuition of momentum optimizer. I'll be giving the most accurate formula over uh, in the, later in the video as well. But for now, you just need to get the intuition of what momentum optimizer is. You do not need to remember the exact formula. But there is one problem with this algorithm that I have just formulated over here. Since we are calculating directly the sum of all the gradients, the net vector that we'll be getting over here this will be accurately pointing in the direction of global minima but it is very large in magnitude and as we'll be keep on proceeding with the iterations this magnitude will keep on getting increases because we are just we are just aggregating the uh, gradients with each iterations and this will create a problem because as we get much more closer to our global minima we will overshoot our global minima and we will never be converging to our global minima and we'll ke just keep on oscillating and that will be become a problem so we need to introduce some kind of friction over here so that with iterations this magnitude can keep on getting reduced so for that 
we introduce one new parameter over here which is called as the momentum so this momentum will be a, uh, a scalar quantity and it will be having the value between 0 to 1 so for now for the demonstration i have just used the value of 0 0.8 over here and let's say we are at the 10th iteration so what we'll be doing is that we'll be multiplying our first gradient which was del j1 by del w with beta to the power 10 so i represents the uh, the current iteration over here will be multiplying del j2 by del w with beta to the power 9 which is i minus 1 over here so i represents again the number of current iteration and will be multiplying our current most recent gradient with beta so you can understand one thing over here is that if we increase the power of our beta which is 0 0.8 the value will keep on getting decreased so from this you can understand one thing over here is that we are getting more we are giving more weightage to the most recent gradients and we are gi giving very less weightage to the most initial gradients over here why because beta to the power 10 will be a very small value so this first gradient will be getting a very small weightage and second iteration will be getting a slightly more weightage but it will be still be very small and using this aggregated sum will be updating our weights over here so we have introduced two new terms over here what one is momentum vector which is the sum of all this gradients or all this previous gradients and a momentum uh, and a momentum so this momentum and momentum vector are two different things do not need to confuse over here this is a vector and this is a scalar quantity okay so the as i said in previously this is the complete formula of momentum algorithm the momentum optimizer you do not need to remember this formula but you can just have for the sake of completeness i have just introduced this formula over here this theta is nothing else but the weights w and this eta is our learning rate which was alpha initially okay so we are calculating our momentum vector in each iteration and then we are updating our weights using this momentum vector again you do not need to confuse with this positive sign over here because this is a convention you will find that at some places they do use positive sign in some places they do use negative sign but it depends on how you are calculating the momentum vector over here so you will find some discrepancy over here but overall the idea remains same so this was all about the uh, so yeah one more thing over here uh, about the beta or momentum uh, momentum parameter if we keep the momentum parameter to be zero over here so this will become zero and our momentum value uh, the value of our momentum vector will be nothing else but it will become equal to the current gradient right and this algorithm will again become a simple gradient descent algorithm if we keep momentum to be zero if we keep momentum to be one then again we will face the same issue that our momentum vector will keep on getting increase with each iterations and we will start overshooting our minima and will keep on oscillating without converging at the global minima okay now a next optimizer a different optimizer which is much more advanced version of our momentum optimizer this is called as the nestor accelerated gradient optimizer so in simple gradient descent what we do is that let's say at ith iteration we are at weight wi we calculate the gradient and we update our weights along the direction of the gradient but in nestor accelerated gradient we don't calculate the gradient at the current weights wi instead we keep, we move a little bit ahead in the direction of momentum so after moving in the direction of momentum let's say we get a new weight wi prime we calculate the gradient at this particular point and we update the our parameters along the gradient calculated at this particular point so let's say the gradient that we calculated at this particular point is del j by del w i prime then we'll be updating our gradient along this the, along the direction of this particular gradient so this is the idea of nestor accelerated gradient optimizer and this is the formalization or uh, the formula for nestor gradient Excel, uh, uh, gradient optimizer you can see that instead of calculating the weights uh, calculating the gradient at the weights w or theta we are calculating the gradient a little bit in the direction by a little bit by going little bit in the direction of the momentum right so this is our nestor accelerated gradient optimizer so this is for this video if you have any questions you can write that down in the comment section i will try to answer those questions see you in the next video thank you